can hear it in the background. Let's say hello to the cars since they're here. Hello to the cars. Hello to the cars. Hello to the cars. If you're too pleased, they were with you. I see sticks all around. Let's say hello to the sticks. Hello to the sticks. Planting flowers, planting flowers, 
I know it's exciting. Do, 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 do. That's my paper. But here is the park. I see. Oh, I spy some stuff. I spy. What do you guys spy on the ground here? I spy some sticks. I spy the beginning of a plant here. I'm going to walk a little further and show you the rest of its family. Oh, here's another one. And see if you can tell what this is. Bum, bum, bum. Anybody know what plant this is? Well, before you, before you give the answer, let's practice learning about the plant. So, this plant, let's see if we can notice things. First of all, this isn't the best example, but over here you can see an example of it. See how it's kind of in a circle? All the leaves are in a circle? So, it's a rosette base. That means rosette, like it's in a circle. Whoopsie, where am I pointing? There we go. The rosette base. And it's got um, several, this one just has one, but you can have several flowering stems coming out of the rosette base. And there's about 150 to 200 little yellow ray florets. That's what each of these are called, little yellow ray florets coming out of there, out of the flower. And let's look at the leaves. Okay, let's check carefully. These leaves are toothy. They look like big sharp teeth. See how they go jig, zigzag, zigzag, zigzag? They're toothy. They're toothy. They're deeply notched. See how deep they go in? And they're basil leaves. And they're hairless. There's no hair on these leaves. Toothy, deeply notched basil leaves that are hairless. Um, and anybody, okay, you guys ready? Now that we've identified that, anyone want to identify the plant? Three, two, one, go! Yeah, it's a dandelion! Also called, in the Latin name is Taraxacum officinale. Officinale. Taraxacum officinale. So that's how to identify this plant. Um, it does have edible leaves. You can use the leaves in a salad or cook them up. The roots you can make tea out of. In Chinese medicine, um, we call this, let me make sure I have that right, Pugong Ying. Yeah, Pugong Ying. And we use it to help move things when your body feels all clogged and stuck and it's, you're kind of emotional. Um, it's good for that. And um, as we say, it courses the liver. And Western herbalists say that too. And the flower can be eaten as well. And guess what? Oh, Tank wants to look at it. I'll pull it back so you can see. Guess what? Hi, Tank. Yeah, are you looking at the dandelion? Yeah you can make dandelion fritters out of it. Okay, you guys ready? Parents, take notes of this. You get one, two, three, four cups of washed flowers. Mind you, this recipe can be divided in half. Four cups of washed flowers, two cups of um, baking flour, like wheat flour or gluten-free baking flour, two eggs, and two cups of milk. And what you do is you mix the baking flour and the eggs and the milk all together. Mix, 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 mix. And then you put oil in a skillet on medium, medium high. And then when it gets a little sizzly, you dip the flowers. You're going to pick the flowers kind of at the stalk here. I'm going to do this. Thank you, flower. Pick it at the stalk here. And then you dip the heads of the flour into the mix that you made, the batter that you made. And then you're going to put it in the pan and fry it until it's brown. And then you can flip it over again. And then when it's out, you want to put it on a paper towel so it can like seep off all the grease. And then you can eat it. Or you can drizzle it with some honey and make it a little extra sweet. And that's how you make dandelion fritters. 
Now, we're gonna keep walking, but while we're walking, I'm gonna tell you why I am not harvesting this dandelion and why I am not gonna make dandelion fritters out of this dandelion and why you need to always check with an adult before you make dandelion fritters or pick any of the flowers in the area or eat anything because there are lots of plants that are poisonous and you need to make sure to identify it properly. The other thing, I'm gonna turn it on so you can see me, is that also, in addition to some plants being poisonous and can make you really sick or even kill you, um, if it's at a public park like this place is, sometimes they spray pesticides and that can make you really, really, really sick if you eat that. So it's always best to only pick from your yard if you know that no doggies have peed on it and that um, there's no pesticides that were sprayed or at another safe place that your parent knows is safe and free from pesticides and make sure that you are very clear about your identification because there's lots of plants that look like other plants, but they're not. All right, I found a field of dandelions and also there's another plant in here. Tank is smelling around. He's smelling them all. All right, let me see. Oh, Tank, let's not step on them. <laughs> let's see if you guys notice something other than dandelions in here. Tank, can you sit? Oh, good boy. Look at that. I just want to show you. Look, he's listening. He's such a good boy. Oh, he even laid down. Oh. Okay. Any other plant here that you guys notice other than dandelions? What color do you see the flowers? Yeah, let's talk about that plant. Let's look really close. Okay. Yeah, the color is kind of a purplish, pinkish, bluish, right? How many petals does this flower have? Let's look closely. I'm gonna try to tap the screen so you can see it. There you go. One, two, three, four petals, all right. The stems, check out the little bitty hairs on those stems. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, there you go. Do you see the hairs on those stems? stems have little bitty hairs on them okay um and you know what you're not here so you can't smell it but it's a little musky it's kind of a stinky smell and these leaves let's look at one of these leaves up close they're kind of waxy let's see if i can find one there we go the leaves are kind of waxy feeling yep and see how they have uh, let me see if i can turn it so you can see it there you go, they have little points on them. They're not as deeply grooved, but they still have teeth on the sides, like sheep, sharp, sharp, sharp teeth on the sides. They're just not as deeply, deeply grooved um, or deeply notched, but they are teethed. Um, they have teeth, toothed margins on the leaves. And these seed pods, let's see if I can find one. Ah, yeah, right here. This one right here, the seed pod almost looks like a beak right there, doesn't it? Like a pointed beak, like a sword or a sword right there. Da, da, da. Yeah, the seed pods look like pointed beaks or swords. All right, any of these guys, anybody here know what these guys are called? Oh, not the dandelions. <clears throat> these purple ones are called? Dun, da, 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 da. Three, two, one. No? They're blue mustards, or it's in the brassica family or the mustard family. And the Latin name is Corospora tenella. Uh, this is an annual. That means it, it is something that um, is only spread by seed and it has to be spread by seed for it to grow the next year. Um, it's an invasive, non-native, noxious weed species here in Colorado. Here's another version of one up close. There we go. Boop. There, ah, there we go. Now you can see it. Um, this is actually also edible. It's in the mustard family, the brassica family. The leaves, the flowers, and the seed pods are edible, but it's better to eat them when they're young. And again, we're not gonna eat any of them here because this is at a park that I don't know if they've sprayed. And y'all might not know, but ready? I'm gonna zoom back so you can see. We are right by a building and guess what this building is? P.U. an outhouse. No way am I gonna eat a plant by the outhouse. All right, let's go for a walk and we're gonna walk up to the lake. And when we're at the lake, we're gonna observe what we observe near the water's edge. Oh, and while we're on our way to the lake, we can stop and look at this lovely wood sculpture. Somebody carved a wood sculpture. Yeah, what animals do you see here? Uh-huh, an eagle <laughs> and a bear. I like that bear, he looks kind of happy. Oops, sorry, Tank. Oh, hey, 
There's something else I found on our way that I wasn't planning for us to talk about, but it's right here, so we have to talk about it. Any of you guys know what this is? Let's do some plant, some plant parts. So I see leaves of three here, and I don't see any flowers yet. Oh, actually, I do see some popping up, so this is a different branch. See the little yellow ones popping up? I believe this is, a, I'm not positive, I'll have to look it up, but I believe this is a form of golden clover. Um, yeah, clover, woo, nice. It's so exciting to be able to identify things. Oh my goodness, as we're walking up to the lake tank, we're gonna keep walking so that these kids can see where we're going. We're gonna look at a mural that somebody painted on the wall of this building. Whoop, isn't that cool? I see two people fishing, one with a net, one with a pole, and they're catching a big old trout. Oh, whoa, look what's in front of us. A bear in a kayak. Another wood carving or wood sculpture. Woo, I just turned all the way around. Oh my goodness, there's so many bushes. There's another one here that's starting to go to, that's starting to get some leaves on it. Oh, here's another one. We're gonna identify this one another day. We'll come back and identify this guy. If any of you guys know it, wiggle your fingers. If not, go look it up. Notice how the leaves are curly on the sides, on the edges, and they're really long, and they have that strong center stalk, and they are also in a rosette figure, in a circle. Oh, and look, there's a butterfly flying around. Or a moth, I'm actually not sure. I can't identify them yet. And you guys can't see it, but there's tons of mosquitoes flying around here too. And we're just gonna make it up the hill and then we'll go back and do some more story time. But before then, I wanna make it up the hill. I see clouds, I see mountains in the distance, and I see water. It looks like someone's fishing here. So we'll go over to this side so that you guys can observe without bothering the people who are fishing. And I was planning on going down to the water's edge, but maybe we'll do that another day because Tank doesn't seem too keen to go all the way down there. So what I will do is just show you the water's edge. You see the ripples on the water and the clouds in the sky? See if we are quiet and notice anything. I hear some birds. I see some mosquitoes. We'll go down to the water's edge next week when we explore the great outdoors again. But first, I'm gonna grab Tank's lease, which I dropped. There doesn't seem to be any ducks or geese or other birds on the water today, which is interesting because every other day I've gone here, there have been ducks and geese and birds on the lake, but not today. All right, we're gonna go down the stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Whew, lots of stairs. Back over to our sculpture with the bear and the eagle and then back over to our mat. Well, we are gonna talk, see it far away in the distance. We're almost there. While we're out here, you know what I'm thinking of? The green and speckled frog song. One day when I was down by the lake, I saw a frog. Another day I saw a turtle. Maybe we can sing the green and speckled frog song while we're walking back. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a hollowed log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Four green and speckled frogs sat on a hollowed log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a hollow log eating some most delicious 
two green and speckled frogs sat on a hollow log eating some most delicious bug. Yum, yum. One jumped into the hole where it was nice and cool. Then there was one green speckled frog. Lump, lump. One green and speckled frog sat on a hollow log eating some most delicious bug. Yum, yum. Yes. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no green speckled frogs. Blub, blub. Nice song about the frogs. Oh, I have one about bees now. So, actually, I wanted to show you guys since we got back here some special pictures about things you guys can do with bees. Because it's really exciting. First of all, bees are pollinators. And they help take those flowers that we just saw and pollinate them. There's so many important things that bees do. Here is an image, something I wanted to show you guys. Can you see it? I don't think so, because we are outside. Let's see if I can block it. Hmm. Well, we'll keep working on that. It's about pollinators for kids. It says, hi, I'm Buzz the Bee. I'm a solitary bee, which means I do not make honey or I do not live in a colony. Do, 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 do. There we go. I live alone and I like to keep to myself. I don't even want to sting you because I would rather find food, lay eggs, and pollinate plants at the same time. But I am not the only pollinator out there. My friends are important pollinators too. Bees, butterfly, moths, beetles, ants, flies, and wasps are all pollinators. Even birds and bats can pollinate too. Join me to learn about bees and pollination. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning here. Some fun things you can do here. These are some ideas for you guys to play the rest of your day today. Mm, nope, this one. First, you can make a bee hotel. Let's see if I can do that so you can see it. There you go, a bee hotel. There's a lot of supplies here, so have your parents pause the video and look and see. Here's another idea. You can wrap up a bee puppet. You take a piece of cardboard, cut some notches in it, get some string, wrapping it around, and you can take your puppet outside and pretend to pollinate. Collect pollen from the flowers. This one, you can make a pipe cleaner bee. If you have pipe cleaners at home, and you can make little bees out of it. This is another idea. You can make a pretend bee hotel. You make those pipe cleaner bees and then take a shoe box with toilet paper rolls and that can be like where the bees where the bees go into their hive and out here can be the flowers where they pollinate in nature some solitary bees find holes in dead trees or fallen logs to lay their eggs others make their nests on the ground so there's the ground and there's the old logs and holes Ooh, this is a fun game it's to make po move pollen just like a bee does so you cut out these paper flowers and you put little pong pongs on there and that's your pollen Flowers are adaptations for pollination, attracting pollinators with bright colors and attractive scents. When bees visit a flower, pollen sticks to the hairs on their body and is transferred from flower to flower. So what you guys can do are get little chopsticks or little um, tweezers and you put the pong pongs, the pollen, on each of the flowers and there's different colors and so each person in your family is a different color and you're trying to move all of the pollen from one flower to two flowers all the way to the end of your row and once you have all of your flowers pollinated hooray you win and everyone tries to do it at the same time and then you can also dissect a flower so we talked about this yesterday about how the flower parts have the stamen which has the anther and the filament it has pollen on there, it has the sepal and the receptacle and the stem and the ovule and the ovary. This is even more parts than we talked about. And it's got the style and the stigma, which is part of the um, carpal, oopsie, and the petal. Oh, this is another fun one. You can make a bee bath today. You get a little bowl, put a little rocks in, put a little water in, ta-da! Just like birds need water, so do bees and other pollinators. You can help us out by putting a small dish of water next to your bee hotel or garden, or put some rocks in a bowl in a bird bath so that we have something to land on before we take a sip. And so unlike birds, bees don't perch on the edge of it, so they need something to land on. Here's another idea, you get a balloon. You fill it with some flour. 
and then you draw on it with a black marker and uh, hopefully a permanent marker so it doesn't get all over your hands and you have made a squishy bee. There are thousands of bees in the world, most of which are solitary bees that live alone. Some bees like bumblebees and honeybees live together in colonies or in hives. You can learn the life cycle of a butterfly here. This is with pasta, it's really cute. Butterflies and moths are important pollinators too. When they drink nectar from flowers, they move um, pollen around in a plant and carry it to other flowers. So here are some ideas of the life cycle of a butterfly is egg, larva, pupa or chrysalis, and butterfly. And they used rice. Um, what did they use in larva? Oh, little spiral noodles. Uh, and then they used little uh, uh, cup-shaped noodles and then bow tie pasta. <laughs> so cute. So yeah, those are just some ideas you can make today at home about pollinators, about bees. Dun da da. All right, my friend. We are gonna do some yoga, but before we do that, we're gonna read a little bit about Hawk, You Are My Brother. And before we do that, since we went to the water, we're gonna sing a song about fishing on a hot summer day. Take a seat, my friend. Good boy, Frank, you're doing great. All right, let's sing the hot summer day song. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see my head here, so maybe I should kneel. Get your fishing poles ready, just like that person was that we saw at the lake. Oh, I went out fishing on a hot summer day, and I leaned against the fence, and the fence gave way. Slipped my hands in my pockets, and my pockets in my pants. Watching all the fishes do the ishy ishy dance, ishy ishy dance, ishy ishy dance. Watching all the fishes do the ishy ishy dance. You ready to go fast? Oh, I went out fishing on a hot summer day, and I leaned against the fence, and the fence gave way with my hands in my pockets, and my pockets in my pants. Watching all the fishes do the ishy ishy dance, ishy ishy dance, ishy ishy dance. Watching all the fishes do the ishy ishy dance. Whew! Let's do it regular tempo, one more time. Oh, I went out fishing on a hot summer day, and I leaned against the fence, and the fence gave way with my hands in my pockets, and my pockets in my pants. Watching all the fishes do the ishy ishy dance, ishy ishy dance, ishy ishy dance. Watching all the fishes do the ishy ishy dance. Woo wee, ishy ishy dance. All right, let's read a little bit about Hawk. I'm your brother. We're gonna read this book in two parts because it's a very long book and I'm afraid that it might be a little too long for you to read all in one part. I'm gonna actually move this camera this way da -da -da, and hold it for you while I'm reading it because Tank is very, very interested in what these animals are doing around us. Hawk, I'm Your Brother by Bird Baylor, illustrated by Peter Parnell. It's a Caldecott honor book as well. Mm, these pictures are so detailed and so small. Hawk, I'm Your Brother. Way, way over there. Rudy Solo dreams of flying. Wants to float out on the wind, wants to soar over canyons. He doesn't see himself some little light winged bird that flaps and flutters when it flies. No cactus ring, um, no cactus, cactus wren, no sparrow. He'd be more like a hawk gliding smoother than anything else in the world. He sees himself a hawk wrapped up in wind, lifting, facing the sun. That's how he wants to fly. That's all he wants, the only wish he's ever had. No matter what happens, he won't give up. He won't trade it for easier wishes. There, playing alone on the mountainside, a dark skinny boy calling out to a hawk. That's Rudy Soto. People here said that the day he was born, he looked at the sky and lifted his hands toward birds and seemed to smile at Santos Mountain. The first words he ever learned were the words for flying and bird and for up there, up there. And later on, they say that every day he asked his father, when do I learn to fly? He was too young then to know he'd never get his wish. His father said, you run, you climb over rocks, you jump around like a crazy whirlwind. Why do you need to fly? I just do, I need to fly. 
In those days, he thought that somebody would give him an answer. He asked everybody, everybody. And they always said, people don't fly. Never? Never. But Rudy Soto told them this, some people do. Maybe we just don't know those people. Maybe they live far away from here. And when he met new people, he would look at them carefully. Can you fly? They'd only laugh and shake their heads. Finally, he learned to stop asking. Still, he thought that maybe flying is the secret old people keep to themselves. Maybe they go sailing quietly through the sky when children are asleep. Or maybe flying is for magic people. And he even thought that if no one else in the world could fly, he'd be the one who would learn it. Somebody ought to, he said. Somebody, me, Rudy Soto. There, barefoot on the mountainside, he'd almost fly. He'd dream he knew of the power of great wings and sing up to the sun. In his mind, he always seemed to be a hawk the way he flew. Of course, a boy like that would know every nest this side of the mountain. He'd know the time in summer when the young hawks learned to fly. And he'd think a thousand times, Hawk, I'm your brother. Why am I stuck down here? You have to know all this to forgive the boy for what he did. And even then, you may not think he was right to steal the bird. It may seem cruel and selfish and mean, not worthy of one who says he's brother to all birds. But anyway, that's what he did. He stole a hawk, a red-tailed hawk out of its nest before the bird could fly. It was a nest that Rudy Soto must have seen all his life, high on the ledge of a steep, rough canyon wall. He thought that nest might be the best home in the world, up there on Santos Mountain. And he even thought there might be some special magic in a bird that came from Santos Mountain. Somehow he thought he'd share that magic and he'd fly. They say it used to be that way when we knew how to talk to birds and how to call a bird's wild spirit down into our own. He'd heard all those old stories and he'd seen hawks go flying over mountains and felt their power fill the sky. It seemed to him he'd fly if a hawk became his brother. That's why he climbed the cliff at dawn singing, singing to make the magic stronger. And that's why he left an offering of food to show he was that brother. But the young hawk struggled and screamed, called to the bird circling overhead, called to its nest on Santos Mountain. Listen, bird, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of me. Climbing down, he held that bird so close, he felt its heartbeat and the bird felt his. You'll be all right, you'll see. But even a hawk too young to fly knows he's meant to fly. He knows he isn't meant to have a string tied around his leg. He knows he isn't meant to live in a cage. Every day he screams and pulls against the string. He beats his wings against the cage. You'll be happy with me, bird, you will. But the bird looks out with fierce, free eyes and calls to his brothers in the canyon. <coughs> Every day, it is the same. They see those other birds learning to fly, learning to touch the touch and roll and lift of air, learning to dip and dive. They turn when the wind turns. But down below, with his feet touching the sand, Rudy Soto's hawk can only flap his wings and rise as high as a string will let him go. Not high enough, not far enough. Should we keep going? Let's keep going. I think you guys have the attention for this. Rudy Soto tells his hawk, someday we'll fly together. He wants to please that hawk. He's sure he will. He's sure it's going to be his brother. Each day when the melons are picked and the wood is chopped and the corn is hoed, Rudy Soto gives a long soft call and he comes running. He always says, I'm here now, bird. What do you want to do? He takes the bird out of the cage and ties the string around its foot and the bird sits on his shoulder and they walk the desert hills. They go down sandy washes and follow deer tracks into canyons. Sometimes they sit looking off to Santos Mountain. And sometimes they even go on the other side of Santos Mountain to a place where water trickles over flat, smooth rocks. The bird plays in that cold water, dips his wings into the stream and jumps and flaps. The boy says, see, you're happy here with me. 
But even when he says it, he knows it isn't true, because the bird is tugging at the string, and you see sky reflected in his eyes, and his eyes flash, and his wings move with the wind. You can tell he wants to fly. You can tell that's all he wants, the only dream he has. Rudy Soto knows what it's like to want to fly. He knows himself what it's like to have a dream. But even so, he waits until the end of summer, hoping that the bird will be content. Every day it's the same. Oopsie. The bird still tugs and pulls and yearns against the string. Rudy Soto knows the hawk will not give up. <sighs> what else can a boy like Rudy Soto do? He has to say, I don't want to see you so unhappy, bird. He has to say, one of us might as well fly. What else can he do? If he really loves that bird, he has to take him back to the Santos Mountain, to the place where he would like to fly. That's where they go, up to those high red rocks. There's a wind and clouds move across the sky and from far away you can smell rain. Now he unties the string that has held his hawk so long. The hawk is on his shoulder. Fly now, bird, go on. The hawk turns, he moves his wings. Bird, you can fly. The hawk takes his time. There on the rock he jumps and flaps, rises and sinks. He has to learn the force of air and the pull of wind and the feel of freedom. Maybe he jumps a hundred times before he seems to catch the wind, before he lifts himself into that summer sky. At last he soars, his wings shine in the sun, and the way he flies is the way Rudy Soto always dreamed he'd fly. The bird looks down. Then he calls a long ah, cock cry, the kind of cry he used to call to his brothers. Only this time he calls to Rudy Soto and the sound floats on the wind. Rudy Soto answers with the same caw, caw, hawk, caw, hawk sound. Back and forth they call, brother to brother they call all through the afternoon. High on the side of Santos Mountain, Rudy Soto lifts his arms. His hair blows in the wind and his mind, and in his mind, he is flying too. It doesn't even matter that his feet are on the ground. It seems to him he has the whole sky to fly in. When he hears that call, he knows he'll keep it in his mind forever. Rudy Soto doesn't tell anybody. He doesn't say, lucky me, I know about flying, I know about the wind. He never says, there is a hawk that is my brother, so I have a special power. But people here can tell such things. They notice that a hawk calls to him from Santos Mountain, and they hear the way he answers. They see that Rudy Soto has a different look about him. His eyes flash like a young hawk's eyes. And there is sky reflected in those eyes. And it's the sky high over Santos Mountain. People here are not surprised. They're wise enough to understand such things. Hawk, I'm your brother. Well, before we go today, friends, I was hoping that, e that Eagle would join us, but he hasn't joined us yet. So I'll just let you know, this is the spot that I put those, all those sticks that I've made. And this big cottonwood tree, see how thick the bark is? It goes all the way up. And then there's an eagle that likes to perch out on that branch up there, way on the end. But he's not up there today. But maybe another day when we come out here, he'll be up there. Let's do some yoga before we head out. Get your bodies moving. You have been listening to a lot lately, and I think it's time for us to move in and a groove it. All right, Tank, come on over. We're going to do some animal yoga. I'm going to put Tank, you can stand with me, Tank, or not. It's up to you. We're going to do a tree pose. Let's get one foot down. You can keep both feet on the ground like this. 
or you can get one up here. We're going to reach our arms all the way up and be a nice tall tree, just like the trees around us. You can be a cottonwood tree, or an oak tree, or a birch tree, or an aspen tree, or willow, alder, rowan, hawthorn. How many other trees can you guys name? Nice. Let's be a tree on the other leg. Same thing, you can keep your leg on the ground or you can pull it up to your knee. Your foot can bob to your knee. You can be a birch tree, rowan, alder tree, willow tree, ash tree, hawthorn tree, oak tree, holly, bush, hazel tree, apple tree, a broom bush, a blackthorn tree, an elder tree, pine tree, or a cedar tree, or a fir tree, a gorse bush, a heather bush, an aspen tree, or a yew tree. Nice trees, my friends. All right, let's get down and do our frog. We're gonna get all the way down, quite as far as you can, like a froggy. Get our arms here. I want to do three big breaths here. And you know what? It's so exciting to be a frog. Let's go ahead and rib it. Rib it. Rib it. Rib it. All right. Now that we've done our frog, let's do a seed. Just like those seeds that we talking about how we planted the flower. Let's get down. Some people call this child pose. We're going to make ourselves into a little bitty seed. Oh, look, Tank's going up too. Tank's, Tank's going to become a seed too. Let's take three deep breaths into our belly. Two. Three. Then from the seed, Let's turn into a butterfly. You can bring your butterfly wings, really your feet close to your, to your bum or really far out to make those butterfly wings, whatever feels good. I like mine just in the middle. We're gonna reach under our leg and hold our ankle and make those butterfly wings flap, 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 flap. And then if you're really adventurous, you can turn into a flower. Let's see if I can do this on a hill. Whoa, you pick your feet up and balance on your shish bones. Whoa, now we're a sprouting flower. Can we make one petal or one leaf go out and come back? Can we make the other petal or leaf go out and come back? Wow, good job, guys. You know what? Being a flower and a butterfly reminds me of a song. Let's sit here in our butterfly legs and our butterfly position and flap our butterfly wings here. And let's sing If I Were a Butterfly before we head out. If I were a butterfly, I thank the world for giving me wings. If I were a robin in a tree, I thank the world that I could sing. If I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank the world for making me. Uh -huh, huh. Oh, I got a heart and I got a smile. I got fingers and I am a child. And I just thank the world for making me me. Uh -huh, huh. Oh, if I were a fuzzy wuzzy bear, I'd thank the world for my fuzzy wuzzy hair. If I were a crocodile, I'd thank the world for my great smile. If I were an octopus, I thank the world for my legs and great looks. But I just thank the world for making me me. Uh -huh, huh. Oh, I got a heart and I got a smile. I got fingers and I am a child. And I just thank the world for making me me. Uh -huh, huh. Oh. I just thank the world for making me me. Uh huh, huh. Oh, have a great day, guys.
make sure that you do some homework by one, going outside and looking around and seeing if you see any dandelions or if you see any blue mustard plants outside in your yards. Two, and remember, don't eat them until you've talked to a parent first and they've made sure it's safe. Two, uh, you can make dandelion fritters if you find some. Three, you uh, don't forget all those fun things you can do like a bee. You can make those pollinator flowers or make little bee homes, a uh, little beehive. Oh, I forgot to do the bee song. Oh, there's a bee thing that's really cute. Here we go. Here is the beehive. Where are all the bees? Hiding, making honey where no one sees. Watch them come flying out of the hive. One, two, three, four, five. You can do that little fun poem with um, the bee stuff that you make today. So I hope you have lots of fun activities to be out in the great outdoors today. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm gonna take one more scan of the sky to see if I see Mr. Eagle, but I don't see him here today. So we'll just have to see him another day. Thanks friends. Ta-da, come on, thanks.